Hello, in this video we're going to talk about modeling and modeling in complex systems. So let's begin with a definition of what we mean by a model. A model is a simplified representation of a system. It can be conceptual, verbal, diagrammatic, physical, or formal. In other words, mathematical. So in our class we will talk about two classes of models. Those two classes of models are descriptive models and rule-based models. So in descriptive modeling, our goal is simply to describe what the system looks like. So suppose I'm looking at a social network and I've got five people in my social network. We've got Bob. Bob is in the middle of this picture. And Bob is connected to four other people, Sue, Jose, Kathy, and Brian. And so if I'm looking at a social network, my goal might simply be to describe what the system looks like. So for example, with a large social network, maybe if you're looking at Twitter or Facebook data, you know, you might simply want to describe what the social network looks like. In other words, how many nodes are there? How many people are in the network is what we mean by nodes. How many links are there? You know, what's the average number of friends a person has? Things like that. And that's no trivial task when you're working with a large data set. So the second type of modeling we'll talk about is rule-based modeling. The goal is to explain how the system works and to make predictions. So let's look at our social network with Bob in the middle. Bob has four friends, Sue, Jose, Kathy, and Brian. And suppose we want to come up with a rule to describe how the network grows. And if we're interested in coming up with a rule for how the network grows, you know, maybe the rule is add nodes to the most popular individual. So let's say there's a new person that joins this group. Maybe it's a company or a school. Uh, maybe this person is Sarah. You know, who is Sarah going to become friends with? Well, if we come up with a rule, maybe our rule says, okay, new people will attach to the most popular node. And so each time new people come into the network, maybe they will continue to have preference for this popular node. And that's actually a, a famous model called preferential attachment. We'll study this later in our course. But the idea in looking at these two examples, in the first example we're just describing the network. We're just describing the system. In the second approach, we're coming up with rules for how the system works and using that to make predictions. Okay, so I'd like to look at a few ideas related to modeling complex systems and these ideas come from Sayama, our textbook. So he suggests five questions or five points to look at when you're building a model in complex systems. Okay, so first of all, identify the question you are trying to answer. So suppose we're trying to answer a question about a virus, maybe like the flu. And suppose our question is, how is the virus spreading? And that could be really important if we want to prevent a pandemic or we want to keep people healthy. Okay, so first of all, identify the question. Number two, identify the scale at which to model. Now, if we're interested in a virus like the flu, we could certainly model that at the molecular level. We could model that in terms of what's happening within one organism, within one individual. Um, or we could look at what's happening in groups, people that go to the same school or nations and so forth. So you need to identify the scale at which to model. So suppose we're interested in studying the flu virus and maybe we want to uh, measure this at the scale of nations, countries. So I'll say country level so will be so third, identify what objects will be modeled and the types of interactions you will model. So the objects that we're going to model are people, and these people will move around from one place to another, maybe from country to country. And the types of interactions we'll model, we're going to model social interactions. Right. We believe the flu spreads through coughs and sneezes, touching doorknobs, or sharing a desk with someone that might have the flu. 
So we're going to model those sorts of social interactions. And then number four, identify the possible states of the system. So our people, our people, they could be susceptible to the disease. They could be infected with the disease. They could be recovered from the disease. Um, and maybe you have another state immune or inoculated. Uh, so there's even more states you could build in. But what we're really looking at is what is the state of each person? Are they sick or not sick, etc.? And then identify how interactions will change, if at all, over time. Um, and so this is something that we would also have to consider. You know, maybe sick people stay at home, maybe um, people travel from country to country, etc. Now, there have actually been researchers who've studied the spread of diseases along airline routes and, and other sorts of things. Here's an excellent video by uh, Dr. Vespignani. He's at Northeastern University. And so I highly encourage you to watch this uh, short video where he talks about his research in this area. Okay, so lastly, let's talk about what is a good model. So a good model, according to our textbook author, is simple, valid, and robust. So first of all, simple. A simple model eliminates extra parameters, right? So if you have a choice between a very complicated theory or a very simple one, the simple approach is what we want. The simplest explanation is usually the best. Valid. A good model must agree with the observations. Not only that, are the assumptions realistic? Do the predictions agree with the observed data? And so forth. Lastly, robust. A good model must be insensitive to small changes in the variables or the parameters.